All right. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph. I am now using the lights in the studio, making myself look a lot healthier skin tone-wise, rather than my normal whiteness, uh, whitewashing your uh, television stations over here on MCAT. Let's uh, kick things off with a little bit of news, and I'm going to jump right into other things that are happening uh, on my show in the city of Missoula and more. Israel and Palestine. Big news that are happening in the last two weeks as a... Um, Eviction turned extremely violent between uh, Hamas militants and Israel militants alike, going back and forth. Um, it has uh, so some of the history uh, started out as a evictions to Palestine residents near the old city in New Jer Jerusalem, one of the largest birthplaces of modern religion. Uh, so far, Palestine launched uh, military strikes from Gaza, where Palestine government lives. Hamas uh, key political sites were targeted by airstrike. This. Uh, this past week, the Associated Press was also targeted um, in their um, offices up in Gaza, uh, uh, and uh, Israel claims that they were uh, they, that there were uh, Hamas militants uh, using it as an outpost, but have no confirmation whatsoever. Gary uh, Pruitt, CEO and president of AP, spoke with, about the events in which Israeli officials gave an hour warning to the site staff before turning the building into rubble, and he was quoted in saying, "The world's media has been." incredibly generous. He also said that in the scene in the interview, but also said that he doesn't, that this doesn't silence the media, but impair them. Um, here, in, here in the U.S., U.S. Uh, politics, as usual, prevent many reps from speaking out, and Joe Biden has seen a split in his party from the uh, moderate Democrats to the uh, progressive uh, Democrats, where progressive uh, Democrats are for uh, Palestine, and they're worried about the human rights violations uh, being done to them, while the moderate Dems are uh, are doing the typical wait and see what happens. Uh, politics aside, one can look at this story as two kids kind of pushing each other on the playground and the parents not doing anything to stop them. And the UN has uh, asked uh, both uh, Israel and Palestine to have a ceasefire in which the firing still continues to today. Um, of course, this was taped on uh, Thursday, so there's no uh, the latest in developments that are happening on Friday, so I am basing this off of just recent stuff. Uh, Here's some other things. As the legislature wrapped up earlier this month, Tuesday reports government buildings being tagged. In Helena, police said uh, Tuesday that five buildings and ten vehicles were defaced recently in a spray painting spree around town that cost more than $10,000 in damages in the state of Montana. Anything uh, worth more than 1500 in terms of damages or stolen property is considered a felony, and uh, police are still looking for information on that as well. And this next story I actually heard from... Uh, uh, Missoula Current. I did a little, uh, I looked into it a little bit more on City Council, but uh, I didn't really get the scope of it as much as uh, uh, Missoula Current. So a group living home has been approved this week in the Missoula to house up to 36 residents aged uh, 55 and older. So far uh, there has been, there hasn't, uh, this would be one of the first uh, kind of uh, uh, community uh, uh, centers for aging adults and whatnot. So they're going to be doing the uh, 55 and older for the project. It's a Hogan Senior Living LLC. Looks to provide uh, attainable housing for seniors close to the city service and the existing downtown amenities. The project is slated for South 6th Street near Higgins Avenue. Uh, the musical Current does go more in depth in depth on this, but the, it's going to be a communal living is, uh, is going to be used. It's much like living in a dorm where they have each of their own rooms and they're going to be using a kitchen. Uh, let's see this. Of course, as, uh, uh, as, as if COVID is going away anytime soon, many uh, establishments in Missouri are keeping their mask mandate in place uh, with suggestions and recommendations. Um, some stores asking folks to uh, wear their masks, even though there a lot of uh, places aren't uh, forced to, uh, you're not forced to wear a mask, and part of the CDC recommendation that passed last week says that if you've been vaccinated, you should be good to go. Uh, you don't have to wear a mask anymore if you've been vaccinated, although there's other circumstances, um, federal buildings as well, uh, because they put a federal ma uh, mask mandate that is in effect until September 13th, which also includes TSA, and that's the Public Transportation uh, Commission, and it, it covers uh, if you're taking a local bus in towns. So. Let's see. In other news, uh, one thing of uh, incentives, uh, 
uh, for people getting vaccines is in Ohio, they're doing a lottery for uh, five people. Each of them are uh, eligible to be thrown into a lottery and win up to a million dollars. And this is for five people uh, aged 18 and over. And then there's some incentives for uh, younger kids who now that they're uh, vaccinating uh, 12 to 15 year olds, Anyone between the age of 12 and 17 will be able to have a full ride scholarship at Ohio uh, State Universities. And this is going to be uh, interesting, but so far, uh, 8% spike for some of the holdouts in Ohio. Uh, there was uh, uh, the beginning spikes for a lot of areas in the United States for a lot of people wanting to get their shots one and done, uh, or, uh, or two and done, depending upon which uh, uh, vaccine you take. And uh, these, with the holdouts, uh, they. <laughs> it's interesting how. Uh, 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 with the holdouts, uh, they waited a certain to a certain degree to get uh, these incentives. And so the people who uh, <laughs> were responsible uh, <laughs> don't get jack squat. So I think that's kind of funny. But anyways, uh, for me, maybe I should have held out as well, but I'm just joking. Uh, but I doubt Montana would follow uh, in kind of what Ohio is doing. Uh, speaking of kind, be kind because uh, this next video I'm about to show you is a video that I made because I was bored and it uses uh, sprite animation. So without further ado, here is Girl in the City. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, now it's time for me to talk a little bit about movies and uh, media that's coming out this weekend. I don't know why I keep on touching this, but let's talk about a couple of crappy movies and shows and whatever. This next one is called The Dry. Uh, while most have been ignoring most of the movies coming out these past few years, the first movie reflects business. The Dry stars Eric Bana in an uh, Australian-produced uh, and made movie. It's the first post-millennial Incredible Hulk, and then kind of did a movie where he was... Uh, cheated on by funny people, and while his wife, uh, anyways, uh, this movie is about a drama, a man against the world kind of vibes from this, uh, it's about a cold case where he goes back into his old ho old uh, hometown and he, uh, where a young teen was murdered and it's a cold case and he has to figure out what happened, I'm pretty sure he figures out what happens and there's a bigger mystery beyond it, in uh, maybe political intrigue, who knows? That's the kind of thing that these movies you can expect from. Up next, we got uh, one of those uh, heartwarming animal movies. Uh, you like those uh, rescued uh, animal movies, and then those animals become uh, major athletes. This one is about a horse. This next film is for those of you who like the whole animal-human connection. And so uh, this one lady convinces a bunch of people to go in on a horse and then uh, train that horse to be the next it horse. So, uh, so let's see here. Hmm. Let me check my notes real quick. But in this case, the big game horse race thing, let's watch a feel-good story about a crowdsourced horse trying to win the big race or whatever. Let me guess, the sequel will be Nightmare Cow. All right, we got a video game that's coming out, and it's uh, Knights Never Yield. And it's a futuristic Tokyo night game. So there's a lot of weird stuff that comes out. It's kind of ridiculous, but in the future, but not quite futuristic, uh, Mirror's Edge still better than a PS5 game and the 3D uh, platform runner and music from Detroit itself. Ooh, uh, Detroit hasn't made good music since Motown. Anyways, moving on. If you want a dystopian society, Detroit is the perfect backdrop for you. Uh, play as a character named Wally who finds out things and must race to the edge to uh, expose political corruption and whatnot. But anyways, uh, 
And I actually just looked at the uh, video not too long ago, and the music's pretty hopping. All right, so that concludes your pre-critic. Up next, we have a new dub and stuff for you guys, and it's about the Inner Sanctum from 1945. And then when I, conta- uh, when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some city council. All right, here you are, lover boy. Hope you enjoy your time. <laughs> okay, it's not like that, you know. Okay, then. Whatever you say. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> All right, thank you for the ride. <laughs> the best way to convey my true emotions is through humor. <laughs> Unique New York. Unique New York. Gnique Gnork. God. Who is there coming in so late? Oh! Hey! <coughs> it's, uh, I'm happy to see you. Uh, sorry it's a little late. I couldn't help myself. Would you be willing to restate that? In a court of law, of course. I'm just kidding. Come in. I like sass as much as the next guy, but jeez. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're making me uh, jump through hoops. Through. Most suitors usually come with a gift. Did you bring me anything? Hmm. I'm not much of a hat guy. Although I might be able to change my mind. So, like, how old are you now? Seventeen and nine months. Pretty close to eighteen. Ah, oh, there she goes again. Talking to them boys about her age and how close she is to eighteen. Don't worry, with the uh, invention that I've created, she'll never grow old. Okay, come on now. Time for your medicine. <laughs> but, Mom, uh, oh, it's awful. You're gonna be my little boy forever, you hear? And there's nothing you can do about it. See it? Nothing. At least allow. Now you see here, young man. You will be I'll always check my snug bug. You got that? You'll always be my snug bug. Growing up is difficult, and I need you not to grow up. To make it simple for us, if you take this medicine. Uh, my voice is getting high. Auntie May, this is the oh, man that's I'm been. Oh, I'm well aware of who this man is. He's here to marry you and take us away from this house. Um, there's a problem. Oh, I'm just taking her to the city. Hmm. And then we can go shopping, we can go to the well, mall. Well, that's a good, a good idea, but... And what do you think? I think this is a great idea. Um, no! no. Uh, I'm gonna go pack. Oh, well, I'll see you later, dear. Oh, wait, uh, one more thing. Make sure you pack the good linen. And also the bad ones for, uh, you know what I mean. Just, uh, remember, um... Oh! See these? This is a staircase. Uh, yeah. You know how to use it, right? Huh, I'll think I'll be okay. Hmm, wait a minute. Oh, I just forgot something. Upstairs, uh, let me join you. Uh, really? And this way, I can show you the proper way of walking up the stairs. One, two... Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, City Council, uh, hey, they're talking about this and that, but uh, one of the things they brought up, uh, this is especially during public comment, there's a lot of people concerned about being evicted here in the city of Missoula and having trouble finding more permanent housing uh, to sustain their life here in Missoula. So Josh Decker kicks off the public comment with concerns of eviction sweeping the city of Missoula. Uh, I don't need to tell any of you that Missoula is in the midst of a housing crisis. Um, I'm calling to at this point, beg you to take immediate action on uh, some things that can stop the occurrence of what amounts to evictions. Uh, Month-to-month leases are being terminated at an alarming rate in town. And rents are being raised at a rate that amounts, you know, the, the rent increases amount to an eviction themselves. Some folks are facing 20, 40, 60, even 100% rent increases with 30 days notice. And that is an eviction for a Missoulian that's a, that's himself a member of the working class. I would beg you to implement strict, harsh, and restrictive regulations on Airbnbs to increase the housing stock. A couple of months ago, I did report on the housing report uh, through the city's Office of Housing, in which they spoke in length about DDR. Uh, Oh, no, DRR. Uh, DDR is Dance Dance Revolution, but DRR is this displacement rate ratio. And that has to do uh, everything with the fact that uh, uh, the, co- the cost of living versus uh, living costs. And so Missoula has a very 
it's not uncommon for a lot of places. There's a lot of inflation. There's a lot of places that are having um, things are getting more expensive. But in Missoula, it kind of, uh, on the national kind of scale, Missoula kind of ranks in the top five of uh, the highest displacement rate ratio as uh, there's not much money for people to sustain themselves and live in Missoula. And on the other hand, housing is really expensive and not many opportunities to buy houses. So uh, Majul's Jobs Reports reported, I think, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, they said that unemployment was at 4.4% per, 4 and this displacement rate ratio, which is probably a lot higher now, but b uh, back when they did the report uh, at the towards the kind of like the beginning of the pandemic a couple months ago, it was at 4% of displa uh, displacement rate. So these are the folks who are at high risk of losing their homes. Uh, Josh, Josh Decker, who uh, spoke in that first comment, also suggested that the city use TIF funding for affordable housing rather than mitigating blight. And But, of course, uh, one of the many things that the city has been doing with TIF money is have been leveraging some developers to add additional unit complexes to be able to uh, have affordable housing. But it's not uh, all affordable housing, so there's some uh, setbacks with that. Uh, Hannah Kelsell who uh, works for the city in distribution of wealth for renters assistance is herself struggling to find uh, more permanent housing. So today I'm here to ask the council, um, how can we support renters always in our community and especially in the next upcoming months as the federal eviction moratorium will come to a close and families are going to experience a rapid decrease in income um, with the end of unemployment funds in our state as well. So working is De definitely a very difficult, especially in the state of Montana. One of the big things that Gianforte suggested in the state of Montana was to withheld uh, unemployment benefits. And uh, the whole idea is, uh, his idea was to do a uh, carrot system in which uh, people, uh, to encourage people to get back to work and provide them, uh, instead of getting their $300 a week through unemployment, they would get a $1,200 uh, bonus if they, had a, if they get a job and hold the job for six weeks. Um, let's see, throughout this meeting, public comment focused on all these folks of many parts of Missoula struggling to keep their spaces and have money to pay for their for the debt that is compiling. On May 11th, uh, the police uh, with Parks and Recreation, uh, they took down uh, some of the encampments that were off of uh, the Clark Fork River just across from the Pavarel Center. And uh, part of this, uh, I'm kind of going into more of the uh, reason behind it. Uh, a lot of people were upset that the city uh, removed the folks from the uh, the river, but if you've lived in Missoula long enough, you do know that there is a high uh, chance of flooding, especially as spring is being sprung, is that uh, the rivers are running high in that area. And if I've driven by there a couple times and I've seen some encampments and tents there, just from my own personal experience is that those tents are like right there on the river, almost in the dead center of where the river is going to rise. Um, so, Sarah Ibish thought removing these folks was unconstitutional. It is unsurprising to literally anyone that the people involved were angry and acted as such. It was a very human reaction to public officials acting in a dehumanizing way, and it was a very human reaction in the face of loss, displacement, and powerlessness. While there is a definite need for solutions that offer safe spaces for people experiencing homelessness, I cannot stress enough how villainizing and dehuman humanizing the city's actions and language has been over the last week. Mayor Engen's office has said that these actions were taken for the public good, but it appears to be a heavy handed attempt at protecting his TIF funded park project, not because the mayor actually cares about the health, safety or well being of people on the island. Mayor Engen has specifically shifted blame to the Missoula Police Department and to Missoula Parks and Rec, but it is his office and this council's responsibility to offer a just solution for what happened. Uh. So recently, uh, even this week, I've, I've driven past there on Broadway, and they have put up a, a fencing, a gate, to prevent anyone from using that walkway off of Broadway to get down to the natural park area. And uh, so, so far, we've seen the lengths that people will go to stay in housing, dealing with evictions, on people trying to hop to another location, and straight up being removed from their encampments, uh, Missoula created temporary programs to help homeless during the winter seasons. But as those winter seasons and those money is uh, up, they've uh, cleared out a lot of those areas as well, and a lot of people have been kind of uh, put back on the street. Uh, but with summer around the corner, these sites are being closed, and tr uh, traditional sites like the Pavarella Center are moving back to their Broadway location and uh, many of their services, mostly. Um, of course, many public comments 
get, can get heavy, especially when it comes to housing, because this has been a long thing. Uh, Nate Beal, longtime resident as a renter, speaks on someone who has a good job here in Missoula, but is still struggling. And as I'm trying to buy a house, there's absolutely no way I can stay in Missoula. There's just none. Uh, my children are not able to find rentals. And this crisis reaches levels that are beyond just the most vulnerable. And so in addition to being here in solidarity with the vulnerable, I just want to mark that the housing crisis climbs higher in some ways, not that it's any bigger priority, but without some sort of drastic action and, and soon, people who have been here for decades are not gonna be able to continue to be here. Like I have a roommate, I have a professional position and I can't afford to live alone right now, much less my children being able to find reasonable accommodations. And without sounding preachy, uh, owning a home has always been associated with generational wealth. Uh, uh, as property has been proven to help, you know, those children. A lot of times, you know, you know, you, you do uh, put money towards uh, an investment, which is a house. And if you're renting it, you're kind of just throwing money into the uh, renting pot. And so it's even harder for a lot of people to even f afford the down payment involved with buying the house, which is uh, usually 20% of the costs of the houses. Um, I'll end the segment with a quote by Andy Housel, who's uh, been an advocate for a lot of displaced folks and who, who has herself gotten the short end of the stick when it comes to treatment. And this is what she had to say. There are things that you can do because I know that there's a, there's a pretty nice relationship between the mayor's office and the police department. So suspend this absolutely unnecessary policing of our unhoused neighbors. Being homeless is not a crime. So whether it's bathroom, laundry, power, parking outside of somewhere, sleeping in your car. We need to completely end any criminalizing of that behavior because it's only going to increase all over the city. Encampments, those are people's homes. Those are human beings who deserve the same dignity and respect that you get every day when you walk down the street. They deserve it too. They don't deserve somebody coming in there and forcibly removing their things, their few possessions, and treating them like trash, who are an eyesore for the Missoulians that you are trying to draw to this town. So I beg you to, while trying to address this housing crisis, treat people who do not have housing with the respect and dignity they deserve. Andy also struggles with houselessness herself uh, and lives in a trailer that she's had to move and has on the reg been towed before. Uh, the Affordable Housing Arisen Oversight Committee was established to, uh, to be the very self-explanatory title uh, um, in reference to affordable housing along with the um, community trust money used for low income and offering affordable housing. So the housing trust isn't necessarily for getting people into homes as much as it's mostly for sustaining people who are already struggling to uh, keep their homes. So that's, uh, it's, uh, the committee uh, is still kind of looking to get some uh, people to be a part of it, renters, buyers. They want a good even 50-50 spread because here in the city of Missoula, there's a high percentage of renters versus the homeowners, and it's about split down the middle. Uh, John Engen does respond to some of the concerns of the people later down in the meeting because during public comment, they're not, the city council don't address people's concerns right then and there, um, just the rules of engagement within the uh, government uh, of Missoula and many other governments and public comments is not a Q&A session. And so this is what he had to say. What is on the table is, I hope, uh, a conversation or two um, and the continuation of the programming that we have in place, our investment in uh, affordable housing, um, which unfortunately is lagging as a function of, uh, as a function of the, the, the nature of construction um, approval, and now is further jeopardized by uh, increases in material costs and labor shortages. Um, there, is a, there is a perfect storm here that I think we're riding out. Um, uh, but what we can do is continue to make those investments through TIF and through other programs. Um, I think I'd be remiss uh, in not emphasizing that the first place that places like the YWCA and the Pavarello and any non-profit housing developer attempting to create inventory to serve um, 
low to moderate income Missoulians come to um, is the Missoula Redevelopment Agency. And that redevelopment agency opens uh, its arms to those proposals um, and invests in them uh, heavily um, and, and to every degree possible. Um, and now we're moving into the business of actually purchasing land for the purpose of housing and developing housing. And so far, this is a new program, and any kind of short-term solutions are not going to show up, but this is one of the things that hopefully the things will get the ball rolling. Um, the north side recently had uh, land being developed and covered 80% of the affordable housing needs for the next five years, and, you know, it's the whole 120% medium area income, and it's implied that they want to have two people who make about 60% 60, 60 of the medium income between the two of them, and hopefully being able to have more affordable housing. A lot of these houses aren't for the individual who wants to buy their own house. Uh, but it is uh, considered affordable housing, and that's kind of what they've uh, been able to do, not to mention that the city's been pretty uh, good about uh, keeping up with the demand for housing, um, especially when it comes to figuring out ways for affordable housing. Uh, the city continues to talk about a new state law that would require an election for municipal court judges rather than the old way in which the city of Missoula would appoint the municipal court judges. And these are for, you know, misdemeanors, parking tickets, uh, you know, you get pulled over, that kind of stuff. And so they're talking about this sudden change that the state law did. And so Mayor John Engen talks about how this will work since the chief judge who is voted as chief uh, because they have more votes than the other two. So they're going to be having a three uh, municipal court judges, which will come up in this next election. And this is what he had to say. This ordinance is crafted um, based on some experience. Uh, in cases where there is no chief judge, we have seen uh, in, in other courts uh, in Missoula, uh, significant, significant conflict uh, between two sitting judges. Um, it creates tremendous uh, stress for staff um, it's inefficient, ineffective, um, and very painful. And this is already complex enough by virtue of the fact that we have a branch of government that is um, supported by uh, a general fund budget that is controlled by another branch of government. Um, yet we have some limited ability to influence how that branch of government operates. So, um, so this is about as clean as it gets, I think, uh, in terms of uh, being able to appoint that chief judge and having uh, that, that single point of contact and um, executive authority in the court. Up next, we have a Tina uh, Ranicki, and uh, she's a staff with um, the municipal court, and she talks about the challenges and potential success of having three full-time judges in the municipal court. Right now, those public, those initial appearance walk-in times are very limited. A person can only come in Monday morning, Wednesday afternoon, or all day Friday. And for a lot of people, that is just not enough time. So we, we have needed full-time judges for a long time. So this is a, it's a bit of a painful move figuring out where to put all of us. But in the end, it will definitely, we are, we are at capacity now, and we have a big caseload to move forward, heavily impacted by COVID. Uh, during COVID, if people failed to appear, we did not suspend their driver's licenses for failing to appear, and we did not put out arrest warrants. As we return to normal or a version of hybridized normal, we will start taking some activities on those fail to appear to get people into court to resolve their case. Well, hopefully from this, people will have more uh, free time to be able to uh, walk-ins so they can pay off their tickets and plead with the judge. Um, uh, let's see. And this position is uh, basically the chief position. And this is like kind of like the person who is like the head chief of the judges in the municipal court because usually it's like been seniority and then the city kind of handles who gets appointed there. But with the new state law, it's usually the one who has the most votes is the chief judge. And then the next person are the two other judges that get voted in based on the votes. It's a very interesting system, but it's a, a thing that the city is uh, working on to make it uh, improve the judge structure moving forward. Um, a nice beefy meeting over two hours long. Some rezoning uh, I passed up, but you can look up that and more. You can find out more about the city of Missoula going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. 
Uh, it is a wonderful website where you get more information about what's happening in the city of Missoula and more. So that about wraps up for that part of the show. Do I have any other videos I want to show you guys, or am I going to jump right into my next segment, which is talking a little bit about events? Hey, May is Bike Month, and as always, a Bike Month is continue, and they're doing a celebration hosted by Trees for Missoula. Starting early morning this morning and going on until about 9.30 a.m. or so, uh, you guys can go to, uh, check out some of the bicycle stations by the Bitterroot Trail off of Ronan Street and 6th Street. It's near uh, Willard High School. And this whole event is sponsored by uh, Trees for Missoula. And you can uh, learn more about it uh, by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. <coughs> also... It might be a little too late for you guys, but it's never too late this month for Bike Month is to Bike to Work Day. Uh, all day event, ride your bicycle to work today. Uh, bicycle will make you happy, saves you money, and helps you uh, helps the climate. Mm, bike some more. Uh, then, of course, you have the $8 bike helmets that the, uh, uh, the St. Pat's Hospital is looking to uh, promote fo folks because apparently over 60% of Missoulians don't actually wear their helmets. Uh, while they're riding their bikes in town. So they're trying to uh, encourage people to be safe because it's better to break a uh, bike helmet than your skull. Um, Zach Art Academy. So they've been doing this for quite a while, and this is a, a nice event for kids and uh, kids aged 6 to 12. And it's, a, it's $20 per day, but it runs uh, basically from 9 to 3 p.m. And anybody who wants to uh, be part of this uh, and the program has been designed to create and provide art-based education support to Missoula's area's families who may be um, experiencing scholastics and scheduling difficulties due to the ongoing COVID pandemic. Um, and so that's happening at the ZAC uh, concurrently with uh, school schedules. Uh, let's see. MCT is streaming their show until the end of May. So they're doing uh, Betty Lou and the Country Beast. It's the whole idea of kind of countryfying uh uh, imagine you go to a fair, uh, you have these two people, one of them is a, a rough old Montana guy uh, who uh, curates roses, and the other is a, a beauty queen who uh, causes a, uh, the, the beast, uh, the country beast, to become a beast, and then in the end they have to learn to work together. This is MCT kind of original where they take an existing property of Beauty and the Beast and kind of turn it on its head to a... Uh, wide audience, and this is a children's theater component of MCT, so it is wonderful, and it will be going on until uh, May 31st. Support your local theater, folks. Missoula, um, and one of the ongoing events also that's happening in it is the uh, Missoula Art Museum. So if you're interested, in go to the Missoula, Missoula Art Museum. They uh, have all sorts of fun uh, hours. Uh, it's from 10 a.m. to about 4 p.m. It's free admission, free expression. It is a, a wonderful source to get New art. I go there at least once a month to kind of check out some of the new art that's happening there. Hmm. And also, a Spectrum Discovery Center is open for uh, visitors ages to explore science through engaging exhibits and activities. Uh, they are currently located at the new library where we are. And also, uh, man, my <laughs> I'm reading from the schedule. It's all messed up. But we have a band happening tonight. If you are interested in going out and about, uh, Imagination Brewing Company is having Beth Lowe and David Horgan at 5.30 at Imagination Brewing Company. And, yeah, they're going to be playing uh, there as well. Um, let's see. Missoula Public Library does an online D&D, &D, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, uh, deal. So if you're interested in doing that, they uh, do it at 6 p.m. You can find out more information by going on to the uh, Missoula Public Library's website. Ah, uh, yes, the Fringe Festival. Uh, Fringe, uh, it's where a bunch of artists come down and uh, uh, show off some of their art. It's a, it, it's a collaborative effort to do kind of off, 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 off-Broadway type performances for a lot of people. And we haven't done it here in Missoula too much, but it looks like they're doing a good uh, co um, compilation of, of actors, and we have... People from uh, pre-recorded film and music, 19 actors from Los Angeles and New York bring their show to life as part of the Big Sky Fringe Festival. Uh, no charge, and it's a free show, and it starts at 7 p.m. via YouTube and Facebook. Uh, there's uh, Julian Pianos, uh, Stave and Hoop. Uh, you at 8 p.m. View venue page, Stave and Hoop. Blah, 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 blah. It's at the... Uh, Wait, what is it? Stave and Hoop Speakeasy here in Missoula. I don't know where that is, actually. But there's no cover, and it's 8 p.m. If you can find out where it is, you can enjoy some uh, dueling pianos. Uh, man, my notes are all messed up on my phone. 
Anyways, Andrew Frank, humor. And this is uh, West Side Theater here. I, I believe this is actually in Bozeman. So happening tonight at 8.30 p.m. on Friday, uh, Andrew Frank is doing some humor sapien. And he's talking about some stuff, uh, West Side Theater in Bozeman. Uh, this is also being streamed through the Big Sky uh, Fringe Festival as well. You can go to BigSkyFringe.com for more information. Let's see. And they're doing some live music at the SNR Saloon. Three Chord Junkies will be performing uh, at 9 p.m. and also on Saturday. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, kicking things off for Saturday. Hey, if you are interested in doing some scavenger hunt, the uh, Missoula, uh, Missoula's uh, Mountain Line Bus Line is doing scavenger hunt to in, in, in conjunction with uh, Bike Month and encouraging people to do alternative uh, forms of public transportation rather than drive themselves. Farmer's Market, as always, is on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you're interested in getting some uh, uh, fresh produce, bread, baked goods, knickknacks, paddywhacks, and uh, plenty of dogs probably have bones. I don't know why I made that joke. That's terrible. Anyways, you guys can enjoy that every Saturday well until October. It's downtown. You can't miss it. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah, Imagination Brewing Company is celebrating six years of existence, and so they're going to be doing some stuff there starting tomorrow. Uh, Zach Mini Show is going to be doing a show, uh, kind of like a fundraising event at Ten Spoon Winery, starting at 5 p.m. Uh, you can RSVP uh, and learn more information by going to ZootownArts.org. My bad. Uh, there's, going to be a ba there's going to be a baseball game on Saturday night. If you're interested in going out and about in Orgren Park, the Missoula Paddleheads, formerly known as the Osprey, will be handing out... Uh, Moose ears to the first 750 uh, participants. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, uh, consecutive uh, events that are happening as well. If you are interested in checking out a book and checking out the new library, it's open from 9 to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Uh, the big event, the big grand opening is happening July 14th, so save the date. And it's going to kick off at 1 p.m. on July 14th. I'm going to remind you later on in my show, but that's pretty much it. Um, let's see. Zootown Arts Community Center... 10 to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday with limited hours on Sunday. Farmer's Market every Saturday, 8 to 1. Okay, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> so that's pretty much it for my show. I wanted to thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, talking really fast, uh, get all these lights on me. I'm just not used to it, but bear with me. Well, and I'll uh, hopefully get it all together next week. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Rand.